Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today I talk about Google shattering SHA-1. Now, SHA-1 is a hashing algorithm similar to other ones like older MD5 and the more recent SHA-2 series. Now, if you haven't heard of a hashing algorithm, basically it's a mathematical or cryptographic function that's used to create a unique fingerprint, digital fingerprint, for some set of data. No matter how large the set of data is, these hashing functions always generate hashes that have the same length, and they should uniquely fingerprint or identify some set of data. Just like normal human fingerprints, fingerprints, if you and I's fingerprints were the same, they would be worthless for us to identify each other uniquely. That's why the best hashing functions are one that can uniquely identify a set of data without colliding with another set of data. And what that means is if two different data sets actually generate the same hash, that is bad because it no longer becomes a unique fingerprint. That said, it's technically impossible to actually uniquely identify a large data set with a smaller thing. You know, there's never going to be enough of those smaller things to uniquely identify every bigger set of data. So the truth is, it is possible to have collisions with hashes. But more modern hashing algorithm, the chance of that collision gets smaller and smaller. And we're talking huge numbers. In any case, the main thing you need to know is a hash is a unique digital fingerprint to identify data, and you don't want two different data sets to have the same hash because that's a collision and that's bad. It means it's not a unique fingerprint anymore. So back to the story, SHA-1 is one of those hashing algorithms and actually it's a hashing algorithm that had a known weakness that the security industry figured out 10 years ago. Basically the chance of you stumbling upon a SHA-1 hash collision was 2 to the 80th power. So that is a humongous number. But researchers found a weaknesses that allowed them to drop that down to 2 to the 69th power power, which although it's still a huge number, is exponentially smaller mathematically than 2 to the 80th power. So this was technically a weakness in SHA when they found this issue a decade ago. But 2 to the 69th power is a huge number, uh, one that most people can't imagine, and I don't even know the technical term for it. So at the time this was discovered a decade ago, most people think uh, that in the real world it wasn't really exploitable. We didn't have enough computing power for bad guys to easily come up with SHA-1 collisions. That brings us to today's story. Today, Google, in partnership with Dutch researchers, released a site called Shattered IO, where they talk about this new shattered attack, essentially using some pretty heavy computing and GPU resources in Google's distributed network in machine learning. They've come up with what they call a practical way to actually generate SHA-1 collisions. Long story short, they can create two PDF files. One could be presumably normal, while the other could possibly be a, a malicious PDF file, and both these files would share the same SHA-1 hash. So this is actually a significant risk if it is practical for attackers to do this. Now, the still kind of good news is Google has significant resources. This still takes a ton of computing power. If you translate this to just one single computer CPU or one a single computer GPU, it's still going to take years and years. But they say an attacker with significant resources resources and funds could actually build a computer that could cause SHA-1 collisions. So what are hash functions used for? Well, they're used for a lot of cryptography things, but the most common thing that this will affect is anything where, where hashes are used for integrity checks. If you have systems like backup systems that check that any uh, file that's been backed up is still the same, it would affect that. If you have malware detection systems that actually identify files using hashes, it could affect that. And also, we use hashes to check that digital certificates are legitimate as well. Now, we also use hashing functions for other cryptographic uh, processes and standards. For instance, HMAX use hashes, but also combine them with a secret key. In those cases where there's also a key involved, this may not be that big a deal. Anyways, the long story short is now it might be possible practically for at least nation state attackers to create SHA-1 collisions. Now, as an industry, we've been depreciating SHA-1 for quite a long time. 
time, but this is the last straw that broke the camel's back. We really can't use SHA-1 anymore for serious file or digital signature integrity checks. At the very least, sites you go to, if they're using SHA-1 digital certificates, they can no longer be considered secure, which is something browsers have been actually enforcing for a little while now. Anyways, it's very interesting news. Do you know, while uh, Google has released this shattered I.O. web page, and they even have a feature where you can upload a file like a PDF file to see if it's had any collisions before online, they haven't actually released all the technical details for their actual practical attack. They're following the typical Google 90-day disclosure policy, so we won't learn all the details for 90 more days, but this really is probably a sure sign that we need to stop using SHA-1 for any sort of uh, integrity checking processes. Now, how big a deal is this to you if you can't get rid of all SHA-1 right away? It's not a huge deal. In the scheme of things, again, this still needs a lot of compute in order for you to generate these collisions. So I don't think it's in the realm of uh, commercial cyber criminals, the people that are generating ransomware and stealing money. I don't think those guys are going to be leveraging this sort of attack with their malware anytime soon. However, it is something that nation states might use against each other in more advanced attacks. Anyways, interesting story. Be sure to check out Google's webpage. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.